you've spoken about the talk phases touching on that as well. And you've spoken about your scrummaging and the improvement in your scrummage. I was personally, I was surprised by the second scrum, how dominant the, the bulls were. Um, did, did that surprise you? Did you mean the second front row? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and also on on the last minute or two or three on defense, on, on the way that you were able to squeeze them. Yeah. yeah. And so on tight play. And then the third part that a part of my question, on your defense that you spoke about, the narrowness of the way they play, that you were able to squeeze them yeah. in that narrowness. Yeah. So Simon. Three questions. One is I was very, very happy with the with the second front row. Put some Piwe and Francois Krupp as well outstanding. And I tell you what I really enjoyed about them is they didn't make any mistakes. They carried, they carried, they didn't lose the ball in contact, which is what they've done a couple of weeks. Francois Krupp is, I don't know if you remember, but he made a tackle on the halfway line against a backline player. Um, you know, some Piwe the same, tackled on the edge against a, a back who thought he could beat him for pace. And then a guy like Reinhard Ludwig you know, coming on as a lock and also had to sort of scramble and, and make a tackle from behind. So, yeah, I was, I, as I said, I was really happy with the way the bench has, has grown. I think the one thing that is significant, different, and you and you know that, last time we played Leinster, they put Ted Furlon and all those guys on the bench. So, I mean, the equation was the other way around, is that when they played, as in our, our reserves, they played against almost the Irish team. Whereas this week, Leinster decided to do it the other way around, put all their big guns first, and and I suppose then it then it's like for like, and I don't mean I don't mean experience wise because their bench has got a thousand, but like for like in that they probably don't get as much game time as as our guys haven't got game time either, which becomes a bit of a leveler. And and lastly, I mean that is exactly what we're looking for is to be able to defend twenty phases without making a mistake. Uh, without, without you know, losing composure, without diving into a rack, without, you know, without slipping a tackle, without, without going off sides. I mean, that's what all defensive teams want to do. You want to be as comfortable without the ball as you are when you have the ball. Because let's be fair, when you're defending, it takes a lot more out of you than when you're attacking. And so, again, credit to our staff because, I mean, they showed they fit. They could play for 80 minutes. The guys who came on didn't drop off. The intensity was the same. And and I sort of repeat myself, but that's where we want to get to. We want to get to a point where if I sit here in three years' time and I tell you that Marcel's on the bench and Marcus on the bench and, you know, and Juan Nokia's on the bench, it mustn't be like we, we, we've sacrificed anything. It must be good enough that we have a squad that is strong enough that you can actually finish with those kind of guys as well. It can't always be be them starting and playing 60, 70 minutes. I mean, those are probably the quickest I've taken off uh, Wilco Low. Usually I keep him there till about 75 minutes. But today I, I had a feeling because Leinster play the way they do that I needed people that could get up off the ground and run. It was going to be more important than, than hoping you get a scrum penalty. Jake, um, congratulations. Um, considering how important your kicking game was going to be for you tonight, and obviously no Kane and no Kirtley, who have been really so integral to that to that success. Just um, how tough do you pursue your Peterson? Yeah. I was very chuffed, except for half time when I gave him a bollocking for getting a yellow card for trying to get in between and not making a tackle. And I said to him, you've got to be brave, Sergio. You can't run in between people. You've got to... And then, you know, credit to him. He made his tackles, jumped in the air, won the ball, he chased. Um, the one guy who's won the URC in our team is Sergio. So who knows? Maybe this week is the most important guy on our team because he'll have to explain to us what it's like to win this competition. And, yeah, so, I mean, I gave it to him, Ken. And I, and I gave it to him not because of any other reason. I just said he's better than that. You know? And I think, credit to him, second half, he obviously realized, geez, I better, you know, I better do my job. Um, I saw Kanan and Kirtley in the change room now. I asked them if uh, injection and tape work. <laughs> um, but I, I can't. 
And don't underestimate a guy like Devin Williams was outstanding. I mean, I thought for a guy who hasn't played for ages, comes in, catches those up and unders. And the one he should have caught, he dropped, would have been a try under the poles. But gee, I mean, he's, uh, it was, for me, I, I don't know I don't know what they said in the media, guys, but I think we caught them a little bit because they didn't think that we were going to play that way. And I don't think they thought that we were going to play with that back line. And the one thing that they're very good at is analyzing opposition. And the one opposition team they probably couldn't analyze was the one we picked because I didn't know we were going to pick that team either. Like how much does it mean for this team? I mean, you always think about the growth of the squad. Yeah. Second final in three years, it's, it's yeah. not a bad, not a bad right? Yeah, and for a young group, Kubis, I want, you know, and again, this is a, this is a baby group. Eh? This, I mean, this is, this, is, this is not close to where we want to be as a group. Um, but... You know, when you say, what does it mean? I mean, these are building blocks we've got to put. We paid our school fees. I kept telling you, you know, we lost in the final, lost to the Stormers in the quarterfinals. We're going to get another crack. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. We've got a Munster, Munster, a hell of a team, the champions. Um, but we we, we are we growing. I mean, I know we're going to get better. I, I mean, I know you, I mean, you, you can't, you can't, you can't put a price to the fact that the experience they get now is going to help them. You know, I, I sort of, Look at that, and I go, if we play in a Curry Cup now, and we play with that team, I mean, isn't that tell you something about, you know, what we, uh, what our expectation would be as a group in a Curry Cup game with a group like that? You know, and, and I said to you last week, you know, our, our progression has been Griquas, Pumas, Cheetahs, you know, Benetton in a Rainbow Cup. That's where we come from in the last few years. You play against Leinster, Six Nations, World Cup, European Cup, European Cup, European Cup, uh, semi-finals, URC, semi-finals, URC. When you put that together and you try and compare where we are as a group, to have, to have that as a, as a boost has got to give you confidence in the next couple of seasons. It's got to. I mean, it's, it's, got, to, it's, got, to, it's got to resonate with them about what they've achieved in a small space of time. Maybe you can, you can just, maybe you can give us confirmation. The Warriors do win tonight? Will the yes. Final be at Loftus? Yes, it'll be at Loftus, yeah. Apparently, the right inauguration has been moved or whatever, yeah, and, and, and generally, the Loftus is available. So, yeah, I mean, it'll be fantastic. Imagine 52,000 people coming to a final at Loftus. I mean, probably like the good old days, you know? We haven't lost we haven't lost a playoff game at Loftus since the Brumbies in 2013, so we, we're in a hell of a place. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, I just sometimes I remember those things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, coach, I think from my side, I want to ask how much credit do you give yourself and your coaching team uh, for one, the recruitment, and two, the way that you work within this whole group of yeah. players. Because we hear every week saying, this Springbok is out, and now this Springbok is out, and then you always find the solution never comes in, knows the system doesn't make yeah. it out. How much work do you guys put in well, to make you big ones? I'd like, I'd like to tell you, listen, I mean, I sit here and I take all the credit, but I mean, it, it's a group effort. I've got Edgar Rathbone contracting. We know we want, we know the kind of players we need to get. You know, we don't have, we don't have, we don't have strange guys in our squad. And I mean that from a point of view, they, they, they're good guys. They, they, they're solid kids. Um, so they, there's, a, there's an ethos about what we try and recruit at the club. Um, the coaches, obviously, as I said to you, the game plan has been spot on. I mean, today we got it right. We played, we played a way in which Leinster never expected us to play. And that's what you need to do when you get to these games because all the analysis that goes into games, if you just try and do the same things, you end up running into a, into a wall. Um, so it's not me saying, you know, the board, the CEO, the coaches, we all we all understand what kind of player we want, who, who we want to try and get to the club. And and the last thing, I suppose, which has really worked in our favor, and I remember sitting in front of all of you in the beginning of the year, I said, I made a mistake last year because I picked the same players every time and I thought they're the only ones that can get a job done. You know, this year we've changed it. We brought in Cameron, we brought in, you know, we brought in Devin, we brought in... Cornell Smith today, we've, you know, I mean, I go through, 
an example that sticks out with me, is there any other fly off that plays in the URC that's number two in his club that's played 50 games? Well, I can't think of one. So when you get a guy like Chris Smith who's played over 50 URC games and he's supposedly your second choice guy, well, then, then you're doing it right. Because generally what I would have done two, three years ago is would have kept the fly off there for every single game for 80 minutes. And talking about that, guys, I must say to you, I cannot believe, I mean, Gerson was outstanding today. I showed him a video of Paul Ruiz playing against Gray Bloom in his matric year. I think he scored 36 points out of 41. So, I mean, that just shows, again, that the, I showed it to him. I probably showed it to him next week again. <laughs> I think last week in my fight, because two years ago you were in the final after beating Leinster, everybody said that yeah. swing is the final in your favor. Again, you're beating Leinster in the semi final yeah. to get to the final. What lessons have you taken from the 2022 experience? Yeah, the one I've learned is we're playing away. <laughs> That's the one I've learned. And, I, and I'm saying it that if we have to play Munster away, we. We're the one team that's, that's you know, when I say South African team, that's the one team that's bad to play away. Um, and Munster proved last year that you can win away. Um, so I suppose what, I, what I'm really going to harp on with my players is that we've had a, we've, we've had a chance of winning away and we, and we, we didn't get it right. Um, now we get another chance to play away. But... You know, three flights, Munster, by Dubai, Doha. Anyway, we'll, we'll sort that out. We'll sort that out. The interesting thing is, I mean, I just chatted to Leinster. They're going home tomorrow. I mean, I would have liked to be on their plane and kept them here for a couple of days. <laughs> Jake, you mentioned about Sergio Peterson being the only one who's won at the UFC. We were speculating before we started whether Cornell Smith was part of the Storm Squad that won at the Yes. Well, does he yes. have any experience? Does he count for? I don't know if he was, I don't know if he ever played in, in the, I'm not sure. I mean, I, again, I, I sound sort of, I'm not sure he was involved in any of those big game playoff games. He might have been in the squad. Um, but, you know, I mean, but I'm sure he would have felt what it was like to win. Um, so, I mean, I'll ask him, I'll ask him about what, you know, what he thinks is, is, is the thing we need. But, you know, the, you know, one thing about, about rugby is you need a lotto ticket to win the lotto. At this stage, we're the one team who's got a lotto ticket and there's other two trying to find a lotto ticket, you know. So that's that's one thing that, that you win. As long as you've got a lotto ticket, you've got a chance to win. You know, you know the story about the guy where he says, please, God, let me win the lotto. And God says, can you meet me halfway and buy a ticket? <laughs> and on that, how did he, what did you think of his game, Cornell Smith's game? I mean, walking into the Bulls team yeah, in the semi-final, I mean, three times I mean, think about this. I mean, I said to him before the game, you get picked in your very first game in the semi-final against the, an Irish backline. Yeah. I mean, you get Anshaw and Ringrose and, J and James Lowe and O'Brien and, and Lemur and it's your first game. So, I mean, can it get any, can, to be fair, can it get any bigger club level than to play in a game like that? Probably not. Uh, and then he goes to wing. You know, then, then he's, you know, he's, he's a, he's a centre and I'm saying he's a centre and he goes to wing. Um, but he must be loving life. You know, yeah. Talking about it, he's probably going to buy a lot of tickets tomorrow as well. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yes uh, Jake, uh, I want to ask you about defense. But first, I want to ask, uh, do you think you surprised Leinster with your kicking game tonight? As you said, Hosen and Billy were unbelievable. Their performance was sublime. The ball went where it needed to go, went as deep, and you really gained a lot from the game. Do you think that surprised Leinster? I did. I did. I think uh, Jacques did his homework, which I'm sure he did. They would have wanted to play contestables. They beat us in, in they beat us in Dublin. And basically, I remember you know, one of the things, and again, you guys go look at that game. We kicked an up and under. One of the players caught it from an up and under. He offloaded, offloaded again. And I think there was a line break and Josh van der Fleer scored under the poles. So we just decided today what we're gonna do is we're not gonna give them because almost almost that play. Is like a line out. It's like a line out attack for them. They catch it, move it, and before you know it, it's already on the other side of the field. So I think they were surprised because we, we didn't give them that that. And I want to say that set piece because theoretically that catch from that kick is almost like a starter play from a set piece. And uh, we got it wrong sometimes. I mean, a charge down and and uh, you know Billy once or twice. You know they. They had to dummy and get out because the pressure was on them. But I think there's no doubt that we surprised them by 
by not giving them the ball they actually wanted to attack from. And are you going to sit down with Gary this week and ask him, what the heck, how, how do we do this? Because you, you had defense that was disciplined and it held its own over 20 phases there late in the game. And that really probably is when the game was secured, at least at that point. Yeah. How are they going to get it right? Did Gary seemed to, what do you do this week? What do you do next week? You know, I don't want to take anything away from Gary. Obviously, he's worked a hell of a hard on getting it. I think the one thing that's significantly different is that our players looked in their eyes today when we warmed up that they were they were going to defend. You know, and one thing about a South African player, when he decides he's going to defend, it becomes very difficult to to beat them. You know, I mean, I, I always say Kakamas last school playing against poor father. They might not score many tries, but they tackle the hell out of each other. You know. And today it looked like that. Looked like it looked like everyone was going to, was never going to let you get through. And, and that's also a credit to the fact that Leinster, I mean, they can attack. We knew you know that we knew. I mean, the one, the one play that I really, and I was, I'm not saying disappointed, but really caught me is when they did that one lineup play and they ended up. It was almost too easy for them to get down the edge there. Um, but. You know, to, to allow them to make one line break like that from a set piece is actually, a, it's a good afternoon because they've been doing that to international sides week in and week out. And I'm talking about as in for Ireland and in, as, as in for Leicester. Jake, uh, <clears throat> just, I mean, there was, you spoke earlier about, about the ref, the penalties. I checked there was. No, four. I didn't speak about the ref. You asked <laughs> me about that. I want to make sure tomorrow I don't get a letter from you or C. <laughs> I went to check. Um, Leinster gave away a whole four penalties in the game, which is absolutely unbelievable for any team. Yeah. Um, and things obviously went wrong on the field, and your players at times were frustrated. But yes. I suppose the good thing is to know that despite that, in, in, in terms of a final, when things don't go your way, they buckle down and they got the job done. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, Ben, I mean, I didn't know it was four, but it, 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 it's incredible for the amount of rugby that was played because that game was a stop start. It's incredible that there's four penalties for for infringements at, at, at every at every aspect of the game, whether it's scrum, whether it's breakdown, whether it's line out, whether it's I mean it's yeah, it's 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 it's, 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 it's actually it's actually incredible. And and I don't know if you're aware of this, but when Benetton played a couple of weeks ago, they gave two penalties away um, against the Sharks. So I mean that's unheard of. Four penalties and two penalties. And, and it, all I'm saying is, it just means that there's an interpretation, or there's a there's a picture that that isn't going to be penalised. And and I and I, I say it to you again. That's what I'm really proud about. Because whatever that picture was, we bought into it. We didn't panic. We then we made sure we could replicate those pictures. Um, and we got a captain that kept the guys calm. Because as an immature team, and we are still very young and immature. We could quite easily have said, "Listen, this is not going to work. This guy is uh, is not helping us, or whatever." You know, and and uh, so I said, "I'm not attacking the referee. I'm not." Could quite easily have been when they when they grabbed Wilson by his collar that that could have been a yellow card two weeks ago, three weeks ago. I'm just using an example, but yeah. You know, so it's 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 you're right. Four penalties is. But I think the way, and you, and you answered it for me, the way we adapted, the way we then replicated those pictures, the way that we accepted that's what's going to happen in that in that scenario was the thing that we've probably matured the most since I've been here. Also, just, I mean, this the, the year's got an unfortunate record now, but three Champions Cup finals, three URC semifinals, missing out and uh, losing those games. Those players, a lot of them haven't played at Loftus. Um, you've been in the game a long time. Um, Irish media are really talking about mental scars about these things. Do you think that plays any role in two weeks' time? Well, look, people said a lot about the All Blacks having mental scars and they won two World Cups in a row. And I think they were the number one team in the world for about three years. So, yeah, I mean, it's not for me. I mean, I wish. I mean, I'm not in, I thank God I'm not involved in that. I'm not involved in Test Rugby anymore. I'm, this is as close as it gets. I must say, I felt today like I was a Springbok coach. Felt like those days when I used to stand in a in a blazer and a tie and uh, and look around the the field. But but I'll tell you one thing I do know is there's going to be fifty two thousand people here and it's going to be an incredible test match because now it's uh, it'll be after this performance. I mean our public will be will be standing queues outside to make sure that they can be part of that.
Okay, just a couple of questions. Um, the first one, when, when Cornell came on and went to wing, what was the thinking? Most people would have thought um, David would have gone there and then. I just thought David again is outstanding, guys. You know, I just think David, I mean, see what happens, little things that happen, Sim, where he stands in the kickoff, where they kicked off to. As soon as that happens, then you move him to the wing and you take away something you practiced. Uh, I think him and Harold are working really well together defensively. And I would rather have made one change. In other words, wing for wing. And I know it wasn't wing for wing because Devon had to go to fullback. But I would have rather made one like that than make... Because I could have put Huerson and put Chris on and put Huerson somewhere as well. But then what happens is the domino effect is that everyone has to shift to a different position. And and I felt at that time of the game, we almost we were almost comfortable enough with, with, a, with a communication and cohesion inside not to make too many changes. And then, um, I think we'll ask this week, um, but where, if you won this game, which would sort of rank as in, I guess, yeah. the 2022 game, and obviously haven't had some moments happened. Yeah. Some, this is one of the biggest wins I've ever had as a coach. And I'd say that, you know, I was lucky enough at the Brumbies to beat the British and Irish Lions. I was lucky at the Bulls to beat South African A, a in Cape Town. Um, but I would say man for man and the pressure that comes with a game like this. And, and especially because Ireland are coming here in three weeks' time. Those are probably the added, the added bonus that I feel that, that this would this would rank as as one of the best club club results I've had. And I say that because, I mean, the, the Brumbies the Brumbies must come close. You beat a British and Irish team with a with a Brumby team without Wallabies because all the Wallabies were away on camp. But in the modern game, and I'm talking the modern now with the way professionalism and the way that the game's gone and and what Ireland have achieved. This Irish team has beaten the All Blacks and the Springboks. So for a club team, and I say club team because they, you know, no Kanan, no Kirtley, no, no Marcel Kutsia who's a Springbok. It, it must rank for me, and I mean, maybe it's just, but must rank there as one of the, one of the best wins we've ever had. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you.